everyone. It is Sunday Sit Down Time. We got the great Eli Hoff from the Post Dispatch in the house tonight for Sunday Sit Down. Eli, how's it going tonight? It's been good. It's football season's in full swing, so happy to be here and talking about real football. Well, we got to see the first real test of the season for the Tigers. They did manage to come out on the other end of it with a win. Today, obviously, the AP Top 25 release. They dropped down one spot to number seven. What's your overall takeaway of dropping one spot in that poll? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think when you look at Mizzou beating the number 24 team in the country in Boston College, you you assume that that's going to lead to them not moving up in the poll, but at least staying the same. And then they, they lose a the spot to, of all teams, Tennessee, which I think is important for Eli Drinkwitz and how he responds this week. Because if you wanted to craft bulletin board material in a vacuum that will get Eli Drinkwitz fired up, losing a spot in the poll to Josh Heupel's Tennessee feels like the, the, the best way to do that. So I think uh, if he needed any ammunition for how to approach this week, he's got it now. Well, I'd say it's time to stand on business, isn't it? When you, when you go into next week's game, you know, obviously SEC action starting up. You kind of saw this team face adversity for the first time, you know, get punched in the mouth but did manage to respond. What, what was your biggest takeaway from that? Hey, I think it was exactly that, that this Missouri team needed to get that experience. No offense to Murray State and Buffalo, but they, they weren't providing that. And so, uh, and I think anyone who watched that game saw that Thomas Castellanos, Bill O'Brien, that Boston College team was a, was a step up from what Missouri had seen in the past. So uh, not only facing that, but settling down and responding to that and eventually controlling that in that second half. It was a really uh, solid second half from that Missouri team. That's important. Vanderbilt you know, might be a step down from what Boston College was, but, but getting that experience early, I think, will translate as the season goes. Well, I feel like we had so much talk about all the receivers, you know, and that, and that core that we talked about before the season started, how amazing it is, it still is, but we've seen a lot from the run game so far this season. Yeah. Marcus Carroll, obviously, Nate Noel having the hot hand, even Brady getting in on the run mm -hmm. game. What's been your overall takeaway from how this offense has been moving the chains? <laughs> I think with Brady Cook, he's been smart with how he's run the football. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been any moments where he's taking a ton of contact that he doesn't need to. It seems like he's how to slide which is which is progress um, but I think with yesterday's game Nate Noel was was so dominant over 100 yards rushing Eli Drinkwood said after it was the the outside zone that Mizzou loves to run that Nate Noel loves to run that's what he ran at App State it was working he, he ran that about 17 times to three gap plays which for for those who are football nerds know that's a sign that it's working so getting that firing early Marcus Carroll makes for a great change of pace I think it's a it's a really strong start for for the rushing attack maybe not so much for the passing attack but if you want to establish the run Mizzou's got that going. Well, you saw Mizzou have a few more chunk plays than they have in, in the games past, you know, yesterday, obviously wanting to get more explosivity out of that offense. What have you seen from the passing game this season? You know, Eli saying he wants to see more consistency in that fact. Uh, yeah, consistency is important. I think getting Brady Cook settled down, getting some of the chemistry back with the receivers is, is going to be important. It seemed like he was a little maybe excited or antsy or, or even just a little overconfident to start the year. So I think getting that reined in will be will be good. You know Brady Cook can make those throws. He's, he's done it on tape by now. It's just about unlocking that or re-unlocking that. I think establishing the run is important too. That opens up other things. That opens up just play action bootlegs and, and getting some of those um, you know RPOs for, for Brady. So I think that's something that, that will translate and settle in as it goes. Maybe a little concerning through week three for it not to be clicking at 100%, but there aren't a lot of teams in the country who have played their best football through week three. So I I don't think it's time to be panicking too much. Well, I'd see we'd seen some pretty good stuff from this MU defense. You know, mm -hmm. two straight shutouts to start the year. Obviously gave up some points, but you expected that against yeah. Boston College. You know, what do you think of what Corey Batoon's done with this group, you know, in his first year so far? I, I think it's been really good. You could tell there, there was an evolved game plan to attack Boston College, to attack Castellanos. It was really interesting. He was using three defensive linemen, four and five at different times. So he's mixing up, giving them different things. I think that's really important. Eli Drinkwitz talks about wanting his defenses to be really multiple, which is means they can do multiple different things and I think Corey Batoon has showed his his unit can do that containing these running quarterbacks is going to be important Diego Pavia and Vanderbilt it'll come up again it'll come up with Jalen Melrose in Alabama it'll keep coming up for this team so what they were able to do to contain Castellanos in Boston College was important um, but that was one test there are going to be several others as the season goes well, I'll tell you what's been a massive problem game after game after game it's been penalties yeah. you know eight for 78 yards uh, on Saturday yesterday what, what's your takeaway on this? Some of them just unnecessary, obviously. Uh, yeah, wholly unnecessary. And, and if Mizzou faces a second and 59 for another time this season, <laughs> that means that. something's gone horribly <laughs> wrong. I think the, the ones that, that stand out the most to me from yesterday were just Luther Burdens because mm -hmm. those are entirely unnecessary and are the type that, again, they, they didn't cost Mizzou too much yesterday other than yardage, but Mizzou still won. 
but those can, can be maybe costly at a minimum, something that jeopardizes a game later on. Luther Burden only stayed in that game because the officials called his second penalty unnecessary roughness instead of unsportsmanlike conduct. If it was the latter, he was tossed from that game and Mizzou didn't have its best player down the stretch. So that's, that's important to not even put him in that situation. You don't want your star wide receiver's availability to be determined by the referees. You just don't want that. So uh, Eli Drinkwood seemed plenty fired up about it yesterday. I'm sure it will be communicated very clearly what the standards are in practice, but uh, that, that needs to be taken off the tape sooner rather than later for this team. Might be an interesting week of practice for those no guys. No but kidding. You, the SEC, rest of the SEC schedule here as we're you know, starting to get into it. What do you like about how this lays out opportunity-wise for the Tigers? Obviously looking to go unbeaten going into Alabama. It's going to be a tall task, though. It is. It is. And, and so, you know, Vanderbilt coming off a loss to Georgia right. State this weekend, probably catching them at a favorable time. Texas A&M, I just don't know what to make of them it's been so up and down and so um, you know it'll be a tough tough road environment at Kyle Field down in College Station but important for the Tigers to get a result there uh, Auburn is another team that's been hard to make sense of so you know it, the path on paper is still there where Missouri could be undefeated when it goes down to Tuscaloosa but uh, things happen in the SEC look at LSU South Carolina yesterday just they can be chaotic so uh, important to take care of business well Eli I appreciate you making some time for us on a Sunday of course always a pleasure awesome for the rest of you guys we'll be right back after the break